Hey there, Jeep fans and ammo crate animals. <laughs> Johnny here, coming at you from rainy, crappy central Pennsylvania. And, um, you know, I have this project that I have had in the woodworks for since March, actually. For, since the first lockdown here in old sunny Pennsylvania. And uh, I wanted a DVD rack, okay? But I wanted it to look like an 81 millimeter mortar shell case, wooden kind. So I got to figuring and thinking and uh, got her all planned out and I'm finally going to start working on this stupid thing and I want to show you guys how to make one. Pretty simple. Now how-to videos are not my strong suit, but I'm going to try my best, okay? So if you, uh, hopefully you guys can follow along and um, it's pr pretty simple. Just some rope and some one buys. So I'll get into that in a minute, okay? Here we go. It's funny, whenever it starts to get and check this out. Christmas Eve 2020 and boy did we get a pile of rain anyways I gotta feed the fire here it's just it's funny that um, when it gets cold and snowy and crappy that's when I want to do my woodworking projects like like clockwork it's unavoidable I don't know I guess there's nothing else I can really do and I'd like to thank Norm Abrams for reminding me but there's no more important safety role than to wear these safety glasses. So this is your um, standard uh, wooden ammo box joint, corner joint. Okay, so what we're going to be working on first are the side panels of this crate. Um, they're 26 long. This is just one by, so it's about a little, a little over three quarter thick. One by four. 28 long. They're originally 26. I'm making mine 28 so I can fit one, two, three rows of DVDs in it. We're going to be cutting a blind dado here up to this point. So you won't be able to see the see it from the front because this will all be open here okay so uh, that's what we're gonna do first I just wanted to set this joint up and show you so um, your end your your side panels are the longest panels on the crate and um, your shortest panels on the crate are the end boards your corner boards that have the rope in them are uh, one by two, one by two and a half and they're not one by two and a half, like three quarter thick. They're one by two and a half, like they're one inch thick. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And they have a dado in them for the rope handle. And I think originally, I haven't torn a real one apart to see, but I think it's an L-shaped dado in there. And then they nail it here, and then they nail it again over here to keep the rope in. But I'm not sure. I just make mine straight through. Okay, so we're going to get, uh, I already have my router set for depth. And I'm going to show you how I set my fence here to run these sons of bitches. All right, so we got our Harbor Freight router here, and we want to find out where exactly the center of this machine is. So I fiddled around for a while, trying to guesstimate where the center point on that uh, straight router bit was. Ended up just taking the bit out, measuring across the table, and dividing by two. And it worked out to... Um, it worked out, I would have been a 30 second on. So it worked out to 2 and 7 eighths minus a 30 second. Okay. So that is what we're going to set our fence at over here. First one I screwed up, I got away from the fence a little bit. And over here, I don't know what I did here. But the uh, each one you do is always a little bit better. Switch to a lower fence, uh, so my handles didn't get all screwed up here. And uh, these are the ones we banged out for the other side. So now we can 
Now we can start putting this crate together. got the old work made out. Boy, these things, these things are really helpful. So if you see one on Marketplace, they're usually being sold for pretty, pretty cheaply. So get yourself one of them. You'll see. You'll see. See how much of a crown that is. I don't really, I don't really care so much about this or this. Although the sideboard does go against one of these ends, I do kind of want that flat. Moral of the story is. Moral of the story is. Uh, don't run your boards through the planer until you are ready to. Send it. <laughs> this, like I say, these sat for quite a long time. And you can see, I love these workmates. They're just great great thing to have even has a built-in tool tool storage tray now I'm gonna knock my nails over it's okay we'll pick them up with the tires Definitely, definitely want to put one through the rope, okay? Because that is what holds the rope in. And like I said, if you had punch through here, you would cinch these nails over. You'd bend them over and set them into this board. <laughs> I kind of wanted to show you that, but I didn't have any nails long enough. All right, another corner board. Now we got a knot here. So this one will be on the outside, y'all. Make sure your rope's flush, close to it. <laughs> we're gonna clamp it down somewhere like this running out of daylight aren't we I hope this video isn't too boring for you folks out there end board perfect now we'll just duplicate this all right we relocated to the barn so I'm gonna stand here and oh 
Oh yeah, it's good. I'm gonna stand here and drink my coffee and space out for a minute. Then we'll finish uh, pounding this thing together. Okay. I guess while I'm here, we'll talk about these sideboards. Okay, so we got our sideboards here. The OG ammo boxes are 26 long total. Okay. I had a... We had a blooper there. I had to... <laughs> we had a blooper there. I had to delete. Okay, so the OG boxes are 26 inches long total, and my tape measure is not going to cooperate with me, so the hell with it. Your end panel is... Uh, one by four. These are actually four inches wide, so it's not like three and a half, like a two by four is three and a half. These are actually four, but it's a one by four, so they're actually three quarter. It's very confusing, I know, but your actual dimensions on these boards are three quarter inch thick, three quarter to seven eighths, somewhere in there, and uh, four inches wide, okay? Your end board, of course, like I said before, is one inch thick, um, to two and a half wide, yes. Anyways, you got your three-quarter inch there with the end board. So you're back from the end, the way these go together here like this. You're one and three-quarter back from the end of this sideboard. Okay? So you measure that out then to get uh, distance enough for three DVD boxes if you add two inches to an original case. And that's how I decided on that length. All right, so we have a, our half inch blind dado here, half inch wide, and I think that's three eighths deep. Okay, plus our 12 for the sides, plus two three eighths is three quarters, so we need a shelf that is 12 and three quarter inches long by half inch wide. We got that here uh, with a piece of half inch thick oak pallet board that I saved. It had, it had started to, um, the end started to cup on me, so I, that's why that's smooth there. I took the hand planer to that. And that's going to be my shelf. So I got the miner saw out here. We'll cut that to length. But first, we're gonna, I'm going to finish my coffee before it gets cold. And then we're going to pound the framework together for this crate. Okay. set up this other end the same way, just run the... final across here. Because I know none of my joints are square, <laughs> ever. set this down about flush something like that and then we'll tighten up and we'll put our board here but you can see how crude my cuts are an end up. Can I cut a square? Cut? No, not really. I make an effort. We'll set it, our board here. Okay. What I'm going to do is send a nail down here in the center through the end board, the end of the crate. And that will allow me to make some fine corrections for square. All you have to do is get it close. You don't have to get it perfect. Definitely not going to get it perfect here. The 
at this place. Okay. Now we'll check it. You can square it right off of the workmate because you know this end panel is in there flat. So just as a quickie, I mean, we're not, uh, we're not making fine furniture here. I don't have the skill to do that kind of woodwork anyways. But you want to make a ammo crate, we make a ammo crate. There's not that nail right in there like this. Just something like this old house, you missed the nail. You ever watch like this old house and um, shows like that in the 90s? <sighs> they would always miss nails. That already has a crack there, so I'm going to move this nail over a little bit to catch what's not split out. Now these are all recycled pallet nails. Whenever I strip pallets, I pull the nails and keep all the nails and sort them by length. So you can see what we're doing here. This is the front. Blind data with the shelf. Okay. Now we need to move a couple things, you yeah? I don't know if my bar clamp's long. Well, definitely go this way with it. That's what we'll do. Wow, that is exactly what I did not want to do. Hey, yay, yay. What a dingle. I had to cut because I knocked my nail cup all over the place, knocked the gloves all over the place. Played six nail pickup, and it's like 20 degrees out. So I had to get out the real clamp because my Walmart bar clamp won't go wide enough to pull this thing in where it's supposed to go. You might be able to put it on the ground and hammer into the side of it like that if you don't have one of these. They're not, they're not horribly, horribly expensive. And I recommend, I recommend you have a couple of good, nice, long clamps. You could probably use a chain, uh, not a chain binder, I mean a ratchet strap around this to pull it in if you wanted to. That's how I would do it. Yep. Now that I stood here a couple of seconds and thought about it, I would use a ratchet strap. So here we go. This side facing me is the floor, the back of the crate. So this is, this is more important to get straight here. So let's say you have a board here and it's just a little bit wider than the end board. Well, you want this joint back here to be flush because that's where the floorboard's going. And this up here can stick out a little bit, if that makes any sense. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna set one in the center here. Now these are all oops. We'll just set one nail in each of the center here. And we'll get rid of this clamp so it doesn't fall over the freaking place. Okay, next step, you can see this knot here. Knot the nail through the knot. Just have to put a little glue in there and forget about it. Measure corner to corner, 30 and 3 eighths. 30 and a quarter, so we're an eighth inch. This is an eighth inch. Along here we're almost in square okay so whenever we put our floorboards on here we're gonna have to pull this into square
because it's not naturally not going to be square. It'll be close. My, my shelf boards, I guess I'm going to cut them. I guess I'm going to cut them 12 and 5 eighths instead of 12 and 3 quarter. So I'm not getting too out of whack here. Uh, open her up. Capitana. Been there, you call me. Make sure you cut on the right side of the line. You hear the old timers say that. Cut on the right side of the line. Cut on the right side of the line. It's true. You cut on the wrong side of the line. You can. Screw yourself all up. Tell you what, folks, I think it's about coffee 30. So we need to get this, get this thing done. Go inside. Sit by the fire. sip on a cup of coffee. It's only like 5.45. But we've not yet crossed the equinox, so the days are getting shorter, not longer. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Let's see. Moment of truth. See if this guy knows what he's talking about or doing whatsoever. Now, what end is going to be? I had this marked the top and the bottom, and I forget which one is which now. Oh well. I think it will sit. Probably sit better on this end. So this will be the bottom. Put the shelves in here like this. This right, right. Timber. Let's uh, hammer gingerly. Set that. All right. We're gonna pull this into square. Because when you start nailing these floorboards in, wherever it is, if it's if it's trapezoidal, it's going to stay that way. So before you nail your floor on, your I call these the floorboards, because if this were a crate, this would be the floor of the box. <sighs> I want to tip it up and measure the shelves, but I don't want these things to fall apart here. Thirty and a quarter. Thirty and a half. It's, it says it's way wrong. <laughs> it's way wrong. So let's just turn this up here. Hopefully it doesn't fall apart. Probably will. Get a square in here. Maybe I just can't measure right. Go farther according to my square, right? Or was that too far? That's about it there. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we'll start nailing. I'm thinking five on each side. Uh, so that's 14 plus 10 is 24. Five on each side, probably, and then two in each. So two, four, six, eight in each end. 
minus 2 is 6 times 2 is 12, plus 10 is 22. I better check that for square. Uh, words. Words are tough. My clamp came off. So we're just going to check and make sure the thing's still square after I screwed, knock some nails in. We're looking pretty good. So we can continue. Board back in here where they were. Bleep it up, but up, but up, but ape. I think that's how I had them. Thin, fat, thin, fat. I'm not crazy, but I feel like I'm hearing things. Do you hear that? That'll hurt later. You guys out there were like, "Boy, I wonder when he's gonna hit his thumb." That one I might have to drill some other time. It was inevitable. You know, it was inevitable. I was going to hit my thumb. That really hurt. Just to let you guys know, I strongly recommend not hitting your thumb. Good, we came through the side. That's what we wanted. Well, I'll tell you what though, that is about what I wanted. And here we are. A modified homemade 81 millimeter armor. Or, 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 or. I wanna say, I want to say half of my half of my videos, half of the film that I shoot are bloopers that I have to edit out. About half. Yeah, about half. What a nincompoop. Anyways, let's uh well, like right now, it, it's a blooper. I can't I just want to go on record as to say, and first, it's really cold out here. My thumb doesn't hurt anymore. That might be because frostbite's setting in. <laughs> but about half of what I film it ends up being bloopers because I just, words are so hard. So here you have it. Here's the completed modified 81 millimeter homemade mortar shell case made in the, in the flavor of GI. Uh, it's nailed together. And Anything sticking out cinched, you could take this and paint it tan if you wanted to. Put your black military ammunition nomenclature on the side if you wanted to get into it. But there are no screws in this. It's all pretty crude looking, which is what the real ones kind of looked like. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope this was uh, descriptive enough so that you could attempt to make this. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go inside and get warmed up. Throw a log on a fire. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. And uh, hey, we'll see you next time. Peace.